so we're gonna try this this is a Japanese maple that I have in my yard it's not very big I only planted it about eight nine years ago but I get lots of gorgeous leaves so I know right now I'm just sort of jumping in from everywhere but I saw this done today and I just fell in love with the results <laughs> okay buddy you can go good thing I'm outside I'm working on a table that is just outside of my husband's workshop so And I have two kinds of papers. This is a uh, like a cardstock. It's a watercolor pad, and I'm just gonna set that over here. Also decided I wanted to try some on the photo paper that I use normally. This is what I would be coffee dyeing. So we're just gonna try this one as well. So I've got ten sheets of each. And these ones are really cute. So I don't know if I'm going to pick up a lot of color on this or not. Okay, so this is one of my canna lilies. Um, she did a yellow one. My yellow ones have all passed. It's uh, the beginning of October here. So I thought I would try orange and see how that worked out. I love this orange color. And then she had also broken apart these and it had the seeds in them. So that sort of gave a pretty cool effect too. And she also said to alternate the folds so one time the folds this side another time it's that side so it doesn't make all the bulk go in one spot which made a lot of sense and we're going to okay. try yarrow now this one's pretty much past but we'll give it a shot anyway colors that I've seen on these are just amazing. Just beautiful. Let's throw some more leaves in here. I have a wheelbarrow behind me where I'm throwing the composting. Then I have a red one. Pretty. I gotta remember to check the camera, see if I'm in frame. Sorry about that. Yeah, you don't want to stay here. You'll get boiled. Okay, now this is gorgeous. This is coleus. And it's got beautiful bright red flower leaves on it so we're gonna give this one a shot I'm saving some of the coleus and the yarrow leaves because I just might make some mix out in the back 40 on the property we got some crabgrass growing so I thought that might make a kind of cool let's just see what this looks like and you know, it might look kind of fun with a couple of the little tiny coleus leaves in here too. Um, how about these? These are really pretty. These are bleeding heart leaves. Come on, guy. You don't want to drown. Okay, my garden is chock full of hostas because I'm a hosta fanatic. 
I collect them. At one point I had over a hundred varieties. Uh, it's not quite that much anymore. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, some of them didn't make it. So we are going to try this. And I can't remember what that hosta was. The flowers came from the Marilyn Monroe hosta. And this leaf is actually from the Marilyn Monroe hosta as well. So we shall see how these work out. Okay, I have a few different coleus in my garden. And this one actually had the flower still. Uh, and it has the different colored leaves. So I thought, well, let's see if this picks up the different colors in the leaves. Okay, so this guy, it's just a little one. Let's so we'll put two on here. And I have an even a different color leaf again. They're gorgeous. They sure look beautiful in the garden. Okay, here I have some Dusty Miller, the Artemisia, the, the um, perennial one. And I'm gonna do another hero with that one. Well, let's throw in a coleus leaf too. Mix it up. Okay, and now I'm going to do fern. Okay, come on. Off you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to do it like this. And I got a couple of mum flowers as well. These flowers were a gift to me from my sister. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, here we go. So we have 10 stacks, 10 sheets in each stack. And... Now I've got to go prepare everything else for this process. Process. It's not a quick and easy project, that's for sure. Be back soon. Okay, I had to get go. I had to go get more paper because I have so many other things I wanted to try this with. So here we have the annual dusty miller. This is just one of my favorite accent pieces. And I love pairing it with the annual salvia. And I planted a lot of the red salvia this year because I planted a lot of red and white in my garden for Canada's 150th birthday. I always do red and white, at least one planter, but okay, so I had to do more of those. So that's the uh. Oh shoot, what do you call it? <laughs> the, co the photo paper. This is the watercolor paper. Sorry about the noise. We live out in the county yet. There's a major county highway not too far. And this is the watercolor paper. Like I said, we're out in the country. <laughs> I found some ragweed. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Okay, I want to do hydrangeas. 
going to keep the leaves on this one too. Isn't that gorgeous? Love it. Okay, so I'm going to try and do this without being too shaky. I'm holding it right now. I'm in my husband's workshop. He has a fridge and a stove. Um, I figure this was better than in the house because it's a lot more ventilated. And the reason you want it ventilated really well is because you add vinegar to the water. The vinegar somehow sets. I'm not sure. Anyway, this pot is um, an old barn. We went out the back by the barn and found a whole bunch of rusted stuff that is going to go in with the book. I've got a brick. It's actually an old patio stone. And then here is my stack. Sorry, that cord, my phone's dying, so I plugged it in. <laughs> this stack is all the papers. And my husband cut me a couple pieces of wood that are about 5 by 8 And I just tied them with some, I think this is stainless steel wire I had in my craft room. So it's starting to boil now, so we're going to put uh, this One of the videos in. I watched, the man had used clamps, but um, the paper and the wood, well, he actually used clamps and cement slabs. And we're going to put this piece of brick on now, <laughs> hopefully. The vinegar's already in there. I'm going to add all this rusted stuff. Okay. So then, once you've got that in there, you have to let it simmer for an hour and a half. So the vinegar's in, the rusty things are in. Okay. We will come back in an hour and a half. Hi, everybody. I wanted to mention, um, you don't come back in an hour and a half, because if you did, there's a chance that the water would have all boiled away. So my plan is to come back every half hour, check, make sure that the papers are still submerged. And if they're not, I've got a kettle here that I'm boiling water in so that I can add, that I can add some more water to this. So yeah, you just want to keep an eye on that, make sure that the water level stays above the papers. Hi everybody, we're back. It's been an hour and a half. Um, well, maybe a little bit more. I uh, let this cool down a bit. And I'm not sure where I had it tied. So I'm now we need to have a low thing of water. Now these are still really hot. Holy cow. Okay. I see we have a problem right away, and we're going to be rinsing these off. Uh, the pages have torn, and I think these are, yeah, these are the, um, oh dear, look at that. Okay, not a problem though. They can be used, and I forgot to put a towel down. Okay, I'll be back in one minute. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Isn't that cool? Other than the fact that it's ripped. <laughs> this was the crabgrass one. Wow, okay. I'm just going to put it over here on the towel 
and yeah, you don't want your um, tap going too hard because it will rip the paper in my case more than it already has. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> okay. So that was the crabgrass and I think this is crabgrass too because no, it's not. But it is still the photo paper and it is ripped. This is the coleus. So here's the piece that ripped off. Pretty cool. Okay, and this ripped right in half. Look at this. Look at the purples. The purples and the orange and the green. Oh, wow. This is very cool. Love it. Just wish it hadn't ripped. But, of course, this is still... Like, okay, this one oh. is the watercolor paper, which is 110 pound weight. Oh, this is the um, canna lily. So, so delicate. So much more. Oh, uh, yeah. So much more delicate than just coffee dyeing. Probably because it's boiling for an hour and a half. Okay. So, let's see. Yeah, the canna. We did get some yellow. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these uh, so I don't bore you with that. And sorry. Um, and then I will come back. Oh. What is this one? This is my Japanese maple. Beautiful. Just beautiful. I love this one. Okay. I'm going to get the rest of these done and we will be back. Okay, so this is now the next day. I have um, all the papers are dry. They, I did do them in the I've oven. I learned a couple things during this process. One of them is that the photo paper I usually do coffee dyeing with, which is this paper here, it didn't stand up. You can see that most of the pages ripped down the middle. The um, other thing was maybe that was because the wood pieces that I had my husband make for me uh, were eight by five, whereas this paper is eight and a half by five and a quarter. So, because you can see the parts that would have been sticking out got a little more wear and tear than the, so I think I'm going to see about getting, I saw one gentleman use cement blocks, not like the big thick block blocks, but cement slabs that were just the perfect size. So I think they might work better for me because even though I put a brick on top, the two pieces of wood that were holding the papers together kept wanting to float. So they sort of were moving around a bit. Um, it was the first time I've done it. It's the learning curve, but... Um, Anyway, this, this is the hyacinth. No, it's not. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's a hydrangea. I had a total mind freeze there. 
Okay, and I love the color of it. It turned out just beautiful. And this was from some of the leaves. So I'm not going to go through all of them. Because um, even though I wrote them down, when I took them out, they all got mixed up. This was a geranium. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm really, even though they've done a lot of ripping in a lot of areas, hey, they'll make great tags. Um, the watercolor paper, the 110 pound paper, it did, it held up a lot better, a lot better. So um, I'll probably stick to using similar, even if it's just cardstock. Uh, just because it, I don't know, now I'm not seeing, it It did rip in half too, so it wasn't perfect either, but you can see fern, these are ferns And there. look at this one, isn't that gorgeous? This is my Japanese maple. I don't have the fern leaf Japanese maple. But look at what this has done. It's stunning. Yeah, just gorgeous. This was a mix of, uh, this was a cypress from my pond. Um, there's also in here, this is a fall crocus. Um, I can't remember the rest of them. But that one had four different ones on it. I think this is the canna lily. So yeah, they didn't all rip in half, but most of them did. This is another hydrangea. Here we go. These are the full sheets that didn't rip in half. But, you know, they're not in... This is another hydrangea. This is actually photo paper that didn't rip. Loving them. Just loving them. It is a lot of work, but the results are definitely worth it. Hmm. Oh, this is a hosta. I think this was the Marilyn Monroe hosta with the hosta flowers there. Uh, and here's that cypress again with the fall crocus and okay the other things I put with it were a barberry which is a bush that uh, has thorns but it was it had it has the bright red berries in it right now so that's probably what turned everything this purple color and you can see the berries in there. Also had one or two morning glories in here. So between the red and the blue that probably helped turn it purple. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay, this is the Dusty Miller, the annual Dusty Miller with the salvia. It's cool the way the yellow got there. Ah! I bet you this is the ragweed. <laughs> that turned out pretty cool too. Okay, this is the nasturtiums. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, and here, I think this is one of my favorite. This is the uh, maple leaf. I had picked up some maple leaves on the ground out back that had already turned color. Wow, love that. Oh, yeah, crabgrass. <laughs> okay, this is my Japanese maple. Isn't that gorgeous? Just gorgeous. Hmm. 
more nasturtiums. This, uh, more maple leaves. So this is the, I mean, I did get a lot of papers that stayed full. I don't know how they'd hold up in a journal. I suppose if I were to back them, it might work. I don't know. But I'm going to have to play with these and see how it goes. They are, was it was a real experience and I learned a lot. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, one of the things I learned is I don't do tutorials very well. <laughs> so I'm glad you were able to bear with me. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.